Hello and welcome to the best women's sports show in Mzanzi. My name is Valen Kurti. So good to have you with us. You're watching The Ladies Club. Thanks for joining us as we bring you all the game changes, the trailblazers and those champions when it comes to women's sports. Our topic today is all about women who have broken the glass ceiling when it comes to coaching. We'd love to hear your views. You can get involved on our social media across all platforms. Just use our hashtag, hashtag The Ladies Club. On Twitter, you can find us at sports at SABC, at Lebo Mutsweli, at Valen Kurti. Uh, we're also on Instagram and on Facebook. So women's football has really evolved massively here in South Africa. The social stigma that's attached to girls playing the game is being removed little by little, more so in different regions. The fight, however, is not over because coaching remains a man's world, or does it? Today we'll be chatting to the amazing UJ women's football head coach and USA national assistant coach, Jabulile Beloy. She broke the glass ceiling in coaching and she's here in studio to chat to us about her story. Welcome to the Ladies Club. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me and it's good to be here to talk about something that I'm passionate about and something that I love, which is women's football development. Okay, so you were a former player, played for Banyana Banyana. Yes. Time on the field or time on the sidelines? Which one is better? Uh, I'm enjoying my time off the field. Sideline. On the sidelines. Yes. You enjoy calling the shots. Was it difficult? I mean, our topic today is about those women that have broken the glass ceiling when it comes to coaching. Did you find that? Did you feel like there was something that you were breaking through, that you were pioneering being a woman's coach in your position? Well, I was lucky enough uh, to be at the right time, at the right place, when I, got, I received a call from uh, Ndutugo Shabalala, uh, a former uh, VED sports officer who invited me to come and assist him in leading the, the VED University ladies senior team. And from there forth, I did not look back. I started equipping myself with coaching courses and was lucky that uh, the university was uh, keen on actually uh, making sure that financially I'm looked after and financially when I have to go for the courses, they will assist. So th that's how my journey has started. And once you are inside, then you realize that hey, there are a lot of challenges as a female coach uh, that you get to uh, go through daily on a daily basis. The fact that sometimes, uh, not sometimes, most of the time, the game is not treated, uh, the ladies' teams are not treated the same as the men's teams. You find that the boys have 20 ball, soccer balls with uh, 19 players, and the ladies have to use uh, 10 balls with 40 players. So you can already see that the challenges are there. Now I have to be bold enough and stand up and say, no, this is not right. Let's rather do things correctly. If you give uh, 10 apples the side, give 10 apples the side as well. So you're not only a, a coach and but you become a an mentor, advocate. but also you have to become an advocate, advocate and for the sport. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. True. So we're going to continue our chat with uh, Jabu in just a short while. For now, though, let's set the tone with an inspiring quote, as we always do. This one comes uh, from a basketball legend, Nancy Lieberman. She says that there's no substitute for hard work. If you work hard and prepare yourself, you might get beat but you will never lose. And basically, you can't speak about the history of a women's basketball without speaking about Nancy Lieberman, uh, because she's a name that's been involved in the sport for so, so many years. She was the first woman to play on a men's professional basketball team, the Springfield fame, back in 1986. She then went on to become the first woman to coach a men's professional basketball team in 2009, when she began coaching the Texas Legends. She's nicknamed Lady Magic, because her skills on the court equal those of NBA legend Magic Johnson. Nancy has done it all and she continues to push new ground, even well into her 60s. Wow. Would you agree with that? Nothing beats hard work. Yeah, nothing beats hard work, for yeah. sure. And also teamwork, if you're in a team sport, uh, everyone achieves more when they're working together. And if you're united in one purpose, surely you'll realize glory in the end. Well, one woman that certainly does work hard is Banyana Banyana midfielder Rafael Wejani, who also happens to come from the same place that Jabu does. And I see her nodding her, her head. We're going to hear her thoughts on Rafael in just a short while, but let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, Jane is the, was the second youngest player in the national women's squad that participated at the 2012 London Olympics. To date, she is one of the nine Banyana players who have reached a 100 goal mark or 100 cap mark. She became the first South African to sign for a top Italian side when 
she joined AC Milan in September. By joining the Italian giants, the 27-year-old now stands uh, the chance uh, to make an appearance in the UEFA Champions League. Now, I see how you nod your head. You know her very well. She's from uh, Soweto, yeah. exactly where you were born and bred and you still currently stay. But isn't she just not only the pride of Soweto, but certainly the pride of South Africa at the moment? She's a phenomenal woman. Uh, the way she plays and the way she carries herself, she's a leader. And if you look at her, her career, if you followed up her career, if you are a player and are able to play uh, uh, under so many coaches and still remain the best and still, still be regarded as the best, that says something about your character and your personality. And it's weird because we've had the name Rafia Wejani on our lips for so many years. Yes. One would assume that she's she's actually a lot older and she's reaching like the twilight of her career, but it almost as if she's like a a bottle of red wine. Right. She just gets better, better with age. Better, yes, indeed she does. And I think uh, her experience playing outside has also given her that, that when she comes back, you can see the difference between her class and the players that are playing still inside the country. So uh, indeed, and uh, we're very proud of her. Yeah, certainly. Are. We're going to continue this conversation. It's all about women's football today here on the Ladies Club. I'd love to hear your uh, comments and your thoughts on social media. Please get involved. Hashtag the Ladies Club. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the Ladies Club. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, still here in the studio, Jabulile Baloi. She's a former Banyana Banyana midfielder who, since finishing her career on the field over a decade ago, has been honing her skills on the sidelines to become one of the foremost women's football coaches. And she's won a bunch of different things, including uh, as the assistant coach of the USA national team, helping our national team end fourth in the world at at the USA World Games. She's also won the USA Championships with UJ and so much more. You spent uh, three years with the national team. Uh, you played until 2009 before you started putting all your focus on being a coach. Can you tell us about that transition from being a player to being a coach? Okay, I played from 2003 until 2006. Uh, the transition for me, because of the passion that I have for women's development, uh, football development, was not that difficult. Uh, hence, I'm saying to you, I'm actually enjoying uh, uh, coaching uh, as much as I used to play the game. Uh, so the transition was not that difficult. Uh, it was just to know yourself uh, as an individual and what you want to achieve and then you pace yourself accordingly and be patient in going through the right directions of you getting to your destiny or what you, you are looking to get or achieve into what you are putting your efforts into. Okay, so the passion is definitely football. Where did it actually come from? The family? Uh, family side, I think, because uh, okay. when we grew up, I'm not the only girl in the house, uh, but when we grew up, I was the only girl child that was always with the boy cousins. Mm -hmm. So when they played, I'd join them. And until they realized, hmm, by the way, you are giving us problems. So <laughs> why not take you and go and play in the streets? And when I got to play in the streets, now everybody's stricken by this uh, talent that they see. It. Hmm, when are you playing more than boys? <laughs> so we can take you and go bet there and <laughs> make money out of you because <laughs> you can score and you know. So uh, that brought so much joy because we used to play one ball. Uh, we called it one ball where you put one break there and the other break yeah. with our goal uh, goal post. So we we score and yeah, I never looked back. Around nineteen. I, I got discovered by uh, giant and uh, some father that used to stay in Midlands, who introduced me to women's football. Mm -hmm. And then at times I was skeptical because I did not want to come through, but he'd always come and fetch me and say, no, 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 now you don't belong here. You are old enough. You can start playing with other ki uh, girl oh, children, yeah. so uh, ladies. 
So he'd come fetch me and sometimes I'd miss training and then he'll come fetch me and also tell the, the mother in the house that hey, your child is giving me problems. <laughs> she doesn't want to come play with other female players. And then when I started making the team, then I started seeing, oh, so I'm good enough as well. So I can be able to play amongst these good players. I'm not that bad. So I started getting, adjusting, adjusting. And unfortunately, uh, when I was 19, yeah, before turning 20, that team, most of the players went, oh, he didn't look after the team very well. So we went to join Mr. Matwasa, so to ladies and coach uh, Bra Alex. And then from there forth, I never looked back. We would always play your provincial teams, would make it, your Gauteng provincial teams would make the team. And I started becoming captain or for the soy to ladies and I started leading your poshas, your figulas toilets and I was like, oh, that means there's something within me yeah. that is good enough for me to be able to be chosen to lead players that I thought I could not play amongst. So from there forth, we started getting a call-ups to go into the national team and quite strangely, the first call-up that I got, I was filling up for someone in the Gauteng national uh, Provincial team. Okay. So what was happening is that uh, the player that was playing right back was not feeling well on the day. So I had to play right back and I'm normally a centre midfield. So when I played, uh, I caught uh, Coach Palacio's eye because I, I, it came natural. I did not realise that I was making overlapping runs, coming up and down, box to box, oh, wow. and I was covering the area quite well. And then he called me in. We went to the, uh, the camp, and when I got into the camp, I'm like, Coach, but my natural position is not right back. Yes. I'm actually a center man. He was like, hey, I, I, I chose you as a, as a right back. You can't tell me now <laughs> that you want to play me. But please, ladies, when we call you, you must know that you play that position that we, we called you for. And I, I always remember that story because to me it was funny, even the way that he articulated it. And unfortunately, because uh, we played with two great players on the right hand side and I was still young because okay. it was the time where they chose the team that would play in Fosloras for, oh. I think it was a qualifier for the AFCON or was it the finals for the AFCON? Remember the, the incident where Banyana Banyana was playing against, against Nigeria, Nigeria and, and the, the stadium got suspended. Or something. It was too, yeah, it was actually, we hosted the African Women's Championship that yes, year. Yes, yes. That's the, the, that, uh, that time. Wow. I was supposed to be in part, part of that uh, team. And unfortunately, I did not make that team. But ne nevertheless... Well, maybe ne it's because you just didn't want to play, <laughs> play right back. <laughs> Probably. And the immaturity about me not understanding that yeah. I'm, perhaps I could have made it in that position. But I never looked back. Continuously worked hard at training and we continue pushing each other with the uh, Cabo Zita. And fortunately, uh, I'm not quite sure of the year, we made the team that uh, Des was captaining and we were playing in Swazi, was it Zimbabwe? I think it was Zimbabwe sure. for the Kosafa Yeah, this games. was early 2000s. Then, yes. Yeah. yeah, I was part of that group and then we won the championship. We were coached by uh, Prashik's Mashaba. Okay. And yeah, from there forth, never looked back. Wow, okay. Yes. Sure. And you can hear that that's just uh, part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you weren't born in Soweto, if your life would have taken the path that it actually did. Hmm. Looking at the stats and knowing what other regions uh, go through, I doubt it would have worked out the way it worked out. Uh, uh, just loosely so. Uh, in, in, in Gauteng, girl, girl children are, 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 are encouraged to play. There's nothing wrong seeing, with, seeing them. If you look at the history of the players that played previously, before even I started playing, yeah. there is not much uh, resistance from the society to say you can't, so, hey. yes, you can't play yeah. football. Because, but in other regions, you hear the stories that they tell, they're like, hmm, Maybe I'm somewhat uh, uh, like uh, fortunate to have had to be residing in Soweto to, to be Definitely. allowed to play amongst other boy kids and not made to feel or not uh, intimidated or not made to feel that uh, uh, I'm weird 
there's something wrong with me because I'm playing football and other kids are playing with dolls. Certainly football is one of the greatest exports from the southwestern township and uh, Soweto Giants, Kaiser Chiefs, are looking at actually starting a women's football team. Yes, I think long overdue. Chiefs marketing director Jessica Motaung recently confirmed that the club is exploring the possibility of starting a women's team. Jessica attended the ACAP Women's Football Strategy Task Force workshop in Cairo. And at the conference, FIFA's Chief Officer for Women's Football, Sarai Berriman urged the Soweto Club to start a women's team. I actually asked Jabu about this earlier, uh, that didn't they used to have a team because I remember a lot of women looking like Kaiser Chiefs actually playing as curtain raisers. She goes, no, 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 that was uh, Soweto ladies. And yes, I used to play there with them. We'll continue our conversation with our game changer when we return. Back, you're watching the ladies club it's uh, the final part of a very interesting show with our game changer today uh, head coach of the women's team the women's football team at the university of johannesburg uh, and we're actually busy watching some highlights uh, from the safa women's league and this league kicked off we have been waiting for this league as women's football fans for mm. the last decade and i'm not over exaggerating we have been waiting for a national women's league for many many years finally september last year we actually got and Jabu says that one of her highlights is actually qualifying the University of Johannesburg women's team for this competition. Uh, have you been happy with how it's been going so far? Because it's taken a little while to find its feet. It's our first time. So okay. we are bound to make errors and at least it started. What's important is that it started and it's running smoothly every week. There are games, but of course there are certain things that need to change that we can see that, okay, when we do this, it works. When we do that, it doesn't work. Uh, I'm sure that the, the, the umbrella of football, which is uh, our South African Football Association, is looking into all the other little things that are not working for the league and to say, next season, come next season, then things would be done differently and things will be done more professionally than how in some situations it's been going. What I'm amazed about when it comes to you and your coaching career is just the variety of teams that you actually coach. You've got uh, a team that you assemble for the uh, Walter Sisulu Discovery uh, Challenge in the Jabu yes. Stars, yes. Uh, which is a, a really s regional competition, very popular um, in Soweto. Yes. And then you've got your university team, which are playing in a league. Then you're an assistant coach on a national yes. level. How important is it that you get to see this like kind of like very wide view of what's happening when it comes to women's football in South Africa. Because of the passion that I have, so I don't limit myself to say I want to focus on certain, uh, one certain aspect of football. I also am one of the instructors, SAFA instructors, so I, I get to do, I also do national, uh, national team players scouting around the country, even for provinces. So I, 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 I broaden up my wings to say, should there be an opportunity for me to go outside the country, then I'll be well equipped to actually be able to be able to uh, survive in, the, in a foreign country and also gather more information and more knowledge that I can also still bring into our country to actually see this uh, spot that we're passionate about growing from strength to strength. Okay, so what foreign country are you eyeing out that you want to go get involved in women's football? Initially, when I started, I wanted to go to Germany so badly. But now that I realize that other countries as well uh, are equally capable of dominating, and I'm looking at a country that is similar to us, slightly similar to us, not entirely, which is uh, Spain. I think they play similar football to us, and I don't think I'd struggle. Uh, should I, for, uh, in terms of culture and everything, you know how the Germans are, they're very cultural. So what Spain, I think they, they're not too cultural. They are cultural, but uh, there's room for other nations there. So I think uh, I'll be able to survive there and I think I'll get more information and be well equipped going forward in the sport. Okay, so yes. La Liga Africa offers 
Chabulile Baloi is her name. I'm just saying, I'm putting it please, out there. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay, so do you get any time to do anything other than football? Currently, outside football, I also am a professional social auxiliary worker. And I work what for... What is that? Okay, uh, it's part of the human sciences, which is okay. your social work, uh, part of social work. Yeah. So I work under a social worker, and I'm looking at uh, actually getting a a degree, PA degree in social work, so that I have a degree in my name and when I go out, when they look for something other than just coaching, I am able to offer something, some other skills. But I'm passionate more about football and I'm so passionate about community work, which uh, makes me, yeah, like, it's too easy for me to work with other, with uh, young girls because I also, um, a social work in training. Who's your role model? Who would you love to work with? I'm very much interested in the technical abilities of Coach Rulani uh, Mokwen. <laughs> <laughs> as much as he's not doing very well, but I also follow uh, Coach Pito Musimani. Okay. And as for ladies, uh, I, I, f I favor the Holland coach national team. Okay. Yes. And uh, music, what music do you listen to? Uh, I'm a piano. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got to dance for us now because now you've seen it, okay? <laughs> and December's not that far gone. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Man. Uh, mostly, I, I like therapeutic music. For me, gospel is one of them. And uh, I listen to your soul R&B, the ancient ones, your Anita Bakers, your, <laughs> your, <ancient ones. laughs> your, your TPs. So for me, that's therapeutic. And yeah, that's basically what I listen to. And your old Kwaito. Your old Kwaito? Yes. Okay. So you love music? I love music. Okay, and any other, I anything else that really, that you're very passionate about? Uh, cooking, even though I don't do it often. Cooking? <laughs> yes, I love cooking. Okay, so, what, I'm good uh, at it. So, 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 so when you want to impress somebody, what are you going to cook for them? Oh, I make a very mean chicken livers and pop. Chicken livers and pop? Oh, yes, my pop is mean. Once you taste my pop, you'll never look for another uh, person to cook pop for you. Really? Yeah. Okay, is that, is that an offer? Can I come? Because my next question is going to be like, you, you've got a dinner party, right? You're going to make them chicken livers and pop. It's yeah. the meal that's going to impress everybody. Who is going to be at the table? I mean, I'm going to be there because I need to taste the pop, right? Yes. But who are the other three people? Oh, most, uh, most importantly, it would be Tina Sonkembuli. Uh, okay, the Henry assistant Ellis. coach for Banyana Banyana, also the uh, head coach of uh, the y uh, USA. USA, yeah, yeah. The USA national team, which Chabu is assistant for. Let's look for a man that we'd like to impress. Ooh. Maybe uh, Ndutugo Shabalala for giving me an opportunity to be where I am. And in 10 years time, if you have to tell me where you are going to be, where is it going to be? I would have been out of the country and came back with uh, doing coaching and would have completed the degree that I'm busy with. And I most probably have my own foundation that will advocate for girl children in sports and beyond sports, and not just focusing on sports in academics as well. And uh, I would have maybe bought my mom a luxury car, just to say thank you, mom, for having my back all these years, and also for uh, being a breadwinner and still instilling values and uh, that would uphold uphold uh, uphold us as we and that we would also uphold as we grow up and to let her know that Jay, I just love her you know what I think when she watches that she's gonna feel as if she's driving out in a Ferrari no matter what car she drives she deserves it Wow, Jolile Baloi, she is our game changer today. Unfortunately, that's what we've got time for. Thank you so much and all the best of luck with your future and with the team. Thank you very much for having me. All right, remember, uh, you can tell us who you would like to see here in our studio. Uh, you can send us your comments on social media, even on our email address. You can see the details at the bottom. Otherwise, myself or Lebel will see you next week. Thanks for spending some time with us. Remember, until we meet again, that greatness is never given. It's always earned. From myself, Ellen Kirtley, and the entire Ladies Club team, goodbye.